Welcome to NTN Nightly. I'm Huma Dimak. This edition stop stories. The Ministry of Commerce wraps up efforts to propel business development through technology. Honorable Wayne Gerard reiterates his commitment to meeting socio-economic needs of constituents. And Prime Minister Honorable Philip J. Pierre to press for tangible goals at the Global Climate Conference in Glasgow. The Ministry of Commerce, Manufacturing, Business Development, Cooperatives and Consumer Affairs and the business community in St. Lucia is observing Business Month throughout November. The theme this year is Propelling Business Development Through Technology. In an address to launch Business Month 2021, Minister for Commerce, Manufacturing, Business Development, Cooperatives and Consumer Affairs, Honorable Emma Hippolit, highlights the significance of technology in business development. As a result of COVID-19, Digital engagement levels have increased exponentially to a point where information and communication technology can no longer be characterized as a mere support service. But it is now the principal driver in the business ecosystem. Technology is evolving at a pace where one can truly be left behind. It is therefore imperative that our nation, especially our business community, the micro, small and medium enterprises, remain abreast with the technology at our disposal, as well as find ways to take full advantage of these opportunities. Minister for Commerce, Manufacturing, Business Development, Cooperatives and Consumer Affairs, Honorable Emma Hippolit. The address by Honorable Hippolit airs in its entirety at 7.30 p.m. Meanwhile, as indicated by Honorable Emma Hippolit, many micro, small and medium enterprises, MSMEs in St. Lucia, have been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic has forced business owners to build greater resilience in their business practices by adopting more creative and innovative ICT tools and devices to facilitate their business processes. Glenn Simon reports. The Ministry of Commerce, Manufacturing, Business Development, Cooperatives and Consumer Affairs is all geared up for the observance of Business Month from November 1st to 30th, 2021, under the theme, Propelling Business Development Through Technology. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Commerce, Sophia Henry, noted that despite the devastating impact the COVID-19 pandemic has had on all aspects of business activity, opportunities for building resilience while improving the productivity of businesses must be highlighted. Many of our businesses have suffered reduced sales, losses, even closure. And um, they have been forced to adopt um, more creative and innovative ICT tools. And we believe that advanced technology is our business's fighting chance during the COVID era and to ensure sustainability post-COVID, hence the reason this year, Business Month, we are focusing on the theme, propelling business development through technology. The activities for Business Month commences on November 1st with an address by the Commerce Minister, Honorable Emma Hippolit, which will be aired on NTN and posted on social media. The ministry has also planned several capacity building workshops targeting existing and new entrepreneurs. The first is from the 3rd to the 5th of November. That's our Lean Canvas business model. It's a business planning workshop. And uh, during that workshop, the participants will be given a template and we will assist them to complete a business plan in a format that can be submitted to a financial institution or any other stakeholder. Um, during the week of November 8th to the 14th, that's Global Entrepreneurship Week. Now, Global Entrepreneurship Week will be spearheaded by the St. Lucia Chamber of Commerce and Industry. However, on the 10th of November, there will be a business resource symposium and the Ministry of Commerce will be making a presentation during that symposium, whereby we'll be informing the general public of all the resources that are available to businesses through the ministry. She added that a Business Startup Essentials Workshop is slated for November 17th while the ministry will host a workshop entitled Design Thinking to Develop a Business from November 18th to the 30th. This workshop is geared at creative young persons with business ideas to think out of the box. 
And so it's a nine day workshop, but nine half days. So again, we are appealing to our young people to take advantage, to contact us, and to register for these workshops. The Commerce PS emphasized that a deliberate focus is being placed on the youth economy by the Ministry of Commerce. The Ministry of Commerce will be there to support because we want to ensure that our young people do not just see themselves as employees but as entrepreneurs because they are intelligent, they are creative and they just need that opportunity for them to start up a business and they will get that assistance at the Ministry of Commerce. So yes, the youth economy will be spearheaded by the Ministry of Finance but the Ministry of Commerce will be working collaboratively with the Ministry of Finance to provide that support to the youth so that they can start up their businesses. The St. Lucia Taiwan Partnership Trade Show will be held on November 26th and 27th, utilizing both a virtual and physical presence at the Grosley Human Resource Center. The full calendar of activities for Business Month can be accessed by visiting Seidu St. Lucia's Facebook page. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Glenn Simon reporting. Parliamentary Representative for Ancillary Canary's Honorable Wayne Girard has reiterated his commitment to meeting the socio-economic needs of constituents. Among the priorities for Honorable Wayne Girard is providing quality health care to all constituents. We hear more from Rajvaru Lawrence. Officials from the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs joined Minister in the Ministry of Finance, Economic Development and Youth Economy and Parliamentary Representative for Ancillary, the Honourable Wayne Girard, on a walkthrough of the completed Ancillary Wellness Centre. The building, located in the heart of the village, will serve residents of the community and environs and will provide staff and customers with an improved experience. Assistant Principal Nursing Officer for Community Nursing Services, Alma Dolor, expressed satisfaction with the facility and highlighted comfort and ease of use among the many benefits of the center. We have the dental unit, we have pharmacy, very well um, done. We have the nutrition department, if many persons have been come, you know, asking for a demonstration room, which is very, very well done. And the place is spacious. You could see that the nurses are going to have enough space. Besides the nurses, we have the, the space for the, the units, like environmental health and so on. So this is a, a, a facility that is really, really at a standard that I know will, the clients will be, will be satisfied, the nurses and other supporting staff will be well pleased to be able to work here and provide a service at a standard that the community will be well pleased and also the surrounding communities. Honorable Wayne Gerard noted the significance of the wellness center to treating the ailments plaguing the community. The important thing about a wellness facility is not just to deal with the injured, but also to impart knowledge and information to the community. Um, as you would see, there's a kitchen as part of this facility which speaks to the nutrition and the importance of nutrition. So going into the future, I think it's important that we utilize the facility not just to deal with the sick, but also to encourage um, people to take better care of themselves. So that I think is a very important fundamental part going forward. Not just dealing with the sick, but also preventing some of the issues that we are now seeing quite a bit of our, uh, our local residents are suffering, the non-communicable diseases, the asthma, the diabetes, um, the COPD. A lot of information could be imparted upon them right in this facility to help address some of those issues. Minister for Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs, the Honorable Moses Jabatis, indicated that the facility provides an avenue for expansion of medical capabilities. I mentioned to the, to the team here today that the location of this facility right here in Ancillary gives us a perfect opportunity to begin to think about the treatment of snake bites and to begin to think about what capacities we can build locally, um, capacities in the nurses, the doctors and the other healthcare professionals and it's, it's, it's not too far-fetched for us to begin to think of a center of excellence, so to speak, um, for the treatment of, of snake bites and so on. And we know canneries, we know Anstory, we know this whole region, and we know about Federalos and so on. And this facility has the space, it gives us opportunities to develop all of those capacities. So we have to think not only of um, a health and wellness center in the traditional health center kind of thinking, but we have to go beyond this 
and to, to see what we can develop, not only for St. Lucia, but for the whole Caribbean. The National Insurance Property and Company Limited, NIPRO, facilitated the walkthrough of the Ancillary Wellness Center. From the Government Information Service, Roger Varro Lawrence reporting. The United Kingdom is hosting the 26th United Nations Climate Conference COP26 in 2021. Heads of state from across the world and global ambassadors convene in Glasgow from October 31, 2021 to discuss pertinent issues surrounding climate change and adaptability. The ultimate goal is to enact changes that will lead to a reduction in carbon emissions for the sustainability of the planet. Chief Executive Officer of the Caribbean Climate Smart Accelerator and Global Ambassador Raquel Moses speaking during the morning update on the National Television Network indicated that there will be a strong Caribbean presence at COP26. Yes, so we'd like to use the voices of our advocates, you know, um, the Virgin, Virgin Unite and the Virgin team, they have a phenomenal global platform. They have been amazing for us and they are working with us to get the messaging out. We have our advocates, Sean Paul, Usain Bolt. We're also working with them and Brian Lara, who's been tremendous and supportive of us. So hoping to use those voices again to, to get the message out that we need to be heard. We need the attention of the globe at this point. We need the funding and we need to get these projects up and off the ground. So we're hoping that to amplify the voices of the advocates who work on our behalf. We are welcoming any additional advocates. Uh, we are in touch with and we work with Rihanna's Claire Lar Lionel Foundation and they do phenomenal work. And we're actually hosting a uh, panel on the 10th of November at COP with the head of her foundation to talk about some of the amazing work that they've done on health centers and, and building resilience across health infrastructure in the region. So we are, we are hoping to pull out all the stops, to use everything at our disposal to try and get the attention of the parties that be, the people with the purse strings who have the ability to help us. And to also let them know that we're not coming just with a hat in hand, but we also have solutions that we have to offer. And they should, they should take those uh, into consideration. Ms. Moses highlighted actions that can be taken by governments and the people of the Caribbean to achieve lower carbon emissions. At the government level, uh, greater awareness needs to be uh, created around what, what's being done. I know that there are phenomenal strides being made in UCS, and so we want to make sure that awareness and information and sharing the data where it's available with people so that people have the ability to take decisions. Also making people aware of the opportunities that exist, uh, promoting entrepreneurship, promoting farming and food security, promoting energy security, developing policies that can allow developers to come in and take on projects that have the ability to generate a return, um, working with us on sharing their projects so that we can help to get these projects funded. And on the people side, it is getting yourself educated, we will share as many resources as we are aware of to hold your governments accountable and to make sure that you understand where they are, understand what they're doing, and you keep them on track and keep this in focus. This is the fight of our lifetime. It is a race to be won, but it is a race we can win. We are racing to zero and we can do this. I know that we can do this. I feel this inside my every atom. We can do this. But we just have to get serious. And so not saying that there hasn't been tremendous strides, but we need to do so much more, so much faster. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Honorable Philip J. Pierre, is among heads of government from the Caribbean attending COP26. Honorable Pierre will address the summit on Tuesday, November 2nd, and urge heads of government to commit to 1.5 degrees Celsius temperature goals and to deliver the promised long-term financial goals for climate mitigations and adaptation which St. Lucia and small island developing states require to protect their vulnerable territories and economies. Honorable Philip J. Pierre arrived in the United Kingdom on Saturday, October 30, and will return to St. Lucia on Saturday, November 6, 2021. In more environment news, on 28 October 2021, the St. Lucia National Trust, SLNT, convened a virtual meeting with key stakeholders to present the findings from a marine assessment study conducted for the marine area around Pigeon Island. The purpose of the marine assessment was to evaluate the current status of the health marine 
ecosystems which surround Pigeon Island to identify the causes of any degradation found and to make recommendations for addressing any anthropogenic and climate change impacts affecting the marine ecosystem. The outputs from this study include a marine ecosystem assessment report, a rehabilitation and monitoring plan, a coral reef and seagrass bed ecosystem valuation report, marine ecosystem maps, and an underwater photography atlas, the first of its kind for Pigeon Island. Janine Compton Antoine is the corporate service manager at the St. Lucia National Trust. And uh, it was indeed very eye-opening. It, it showed us that some of the coral um, is actually healthy and, and doing well. We found stands of a species called um, Acropora palmata, which is elkhorn coral. And this coral had been decimated by um, a bacterial disease in the 80s throughout the Caribbean. So it was indeed surprising and, you know, very heartening to know that this species is doing very well at Pigeon Island. And the consultants have actually recommended that we should undertake a restoration exercise, which would include transplanting some of the healthy species of Acropora to other locations around Pigeon Island. In addition to that, pencil coral and some other coral species were also found to be doing very well. But we've also found the scaly coral um, disease that has been impacting the hard corals throughout the Caribbean. This now is also um, impacting corals at Pigeon Island and has led to the degradation of the reef. We've also noticed that there in the past, Pigeon Island was known to be a nursery area for Queen Conch and no Queen Conch, live Queen Conch were found at Pigeon Island and neither were a, a large number of white sea eggs found at Pigeon Island. As well, the lobsters at Pigeon Island seem to be under severe pressure because they, the only ones that were found around Pigeon Island were juveniles. So it, it shows clearly that we, we have to do um, some further work and further assessments of the species found around Pigeon Island. Some of the pressures on the Pigeon Island marine ecosystems that were observed while the study was being conducted include the use of sun cream and related sunscreen agents by beach users, which may impact the corals. Increased fishing pressure through recreational and small-scale fishing. Ms. Compton Antoine says there are numerous other factors impacting the seagrass bed. These include invasive species like an invasive seagrass that has come in from the Mediterranean, the lionfish, and also a brittle star species, a type of starfish, as well as water quality issues. There are high presence of nitrates and phosphates, which are coming from runoff um, with, from, from, from the mainland St. Lucia. And then one of the, the issues as well that the consultants stressed was the, the, the presence of litter and solid waste that was found in, in the area, as well as anchor damage. So they, they said that consideration should be given to the installation of permanent moorings. And I know that SLASPA and other agencies have been talking about the overall um, plan for Rodney Bay, including the installation of moorings for, for yachting and other vessels. And then they also indicated that they, they noticed that vessels were traversing the area at very high speed, which are risk um, to fauna such as turtles, but also to human life. And they, they said that we, we should look carefully at reducing speed. So th there's a number of things that have been highlighted in this report. And the St. Lucia National Trust looks forward to working with the other agencies to see how we can implement, develop and implement a comprehensive management plan for the area. The estimated economic value of coral reefs and seagrass beds surveyed in the marine area is approximately EC $425,355. The study, which commenced in April 2021 and concluded in September 2021, was conducted by a team of consultants from Cree Ocean as part of the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund being implemented by the St. Lucia National Trust and co-financed by the International Climate Initiative. This is NTN Nightly. Primus Hutchinson is up next. Stay with us.
In 2019 and 2020 respectively, the government of St. Lucia passed the Public Health Smoking Control Amendment and the Public Health Smoking Control Regulations Act, which prohibits the smoking of cigarettes, other electronic devices, or any other substance in businesses and workplaces, public places like bars, restaurants, parks, and beaches, likewise in public transports, taxis, and terminals. We all need to be aware of these new laws and support the smoking restrictions to ensure our health and safety. Fines for offenses are up to $5,000 for individuals or $10,000 for business entities on summary conviction. In this era of COVID-19, smoking and exposure to smoking are unhealthy practices since they are associated with adverse outcomes for those who contract the disease. A smoke-free generation starts with you and me. This is a message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness, supported by Powell on this station. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Equiole. Monsieur, Madame, Department, qui nous reste responsable pour information à gouvernement cette ci ça c'est GIS. À ce moment, télévision nationale pays à NTN, car pour cette nouvelle à Creole, pour cette Primus Hutchinson. Premier ministre de l'Essie, on a Philippe J. Pierre, fait un appel pour cet Essie, fait un petit sacrifice devant l'observation de l'Union Coyol, finissement de la semaine qui passe. Devant une spéciale adresse, Premier ministre Pierre fait public la comprendre que la situation de la maladie de Corona changeait de toute façon sa noter l'habitude de faire avant et la célébration de l'Union Coyol, c'est un qui a affecté, qui devait affecter autant. Selon le Premier ministre, là, c'est pas tout pour c'est pas tout pour maladie corona toutes ces lycées tu as une bonne ta car c'est le voyage de Coyol comme des habitudes et puis grand fête culturelle au lieu de ces lycées mais c'est pas possible comme il pas tout possible depuis l'année 2020 les ces lycées enregistrent premier cas maladie corona le 13 mars premier ministre plaider et puis ces lycées pour faire un sacrifice de voir finir ma semaine à qui passer pour préserver la vie et la famille et la terre généralement Frère, on te sacrifie pour quoi? Pour payer et pour la terre. Parce que si on fait un sacrifice aujourd'hui, demain, c'est plus meilleur. Nous avons gommé la COVID, mais nous avons battu la COVID. Et si nous ne pas fait un sacrifice, nous n'avons pas fait une bataille avec la COVID. Premier ministre Pierre, te plaidé pour tout cette lycée, rester et célébrer Jeune Coyol en Kai. Et si vous suivez mon conseil, il n'y a pas de qui, l'année prochaine, peut payer à Kai à une meilleure situation pour célébrer Jeune Coyol. L'année, ça, tout le monde fait tout sacrifice. So, Donc, nous avons une bonne fête, nous avons une bonne Jeune Coyol, et que tout le monde fait tout sacrifice. Là. Tout le monde qui a doué l'OI, c'est appartement CDC en ville Castri pour plusieurs années, qui a augmenté par plusieurs millions de dollars. J'ai trouvé Goissier par le gouvernement cette ci en bas ministère qui a une responsabilité pour faire CAI. Ça fait un spécial annoncement pour les journalistes PIA. Le ministre qui a une responsabilité pour CAI, on a Richard Frederick, déclaré que tout ce monde là a trouvé un bon cadeau pour Noël l'année 2021. Ça, c'est New York qui a servi appartement résident, eh bien, pour conduire le business. Tout le monde qui doit gouvernement, l'OEI, à CDC, pour up to mois de septembre, le gouvernement a fait une décision pour juste effacer tout ce l'agent. L'agent, ça a coûté le gouvernement 4,2 millions de dollars. Et c'est l'argent nous a vie mettez le gouvernement qui a vie mettez en poche les cinq les même si vous c'est les bas même si vous c'est font la boue what depuis qu'a fait business là et ben qu'a été là nous a effacé rien ça là mais ministre Frédéric fait comprendre ça qu'a fait en bas certaines conditions côté ces mondes là ni pour payer mois octobre et novembre et pas qu'à ni pour payer par un septième en mois décembre au fait pour octobre et novembre et en décembre personne pas capable de payer le loyer 
So, de poupe octobre et novembre, décembre, servi l'argent pour faire bay bay kayo. Ça, c'est un gift gouvernement a kavoué, a kavoué Noël bonnet bay, bay les sept lycées. Because nous, we, dat la tien pandémique, la tien COVID, la tien tout bay qui a péché moun fe, se kalte l'argent yo habitué fe. Um, depuis sa fête, je viens nous kavye commencer et tout tenant, Kaini pou siye o lis nef. Yo ka siye o lis kom kwi yo dako tout renta e fasi. Nou kai, nou kai, um, tout renta e fasi. Nou kai, nou ka vie koumansi, so nou kai pi. Depi sa vini en plas, nou pa kai gouvenman, pa kai tolowe moun pa ka pe yanko. Non, nous kay tout le monde, nous kapou apatman et vie lui bay lot moun. Se bagay sala ni pou dou bout, kon nous ka koumanse nef. Koumen ka di, gouvernement ka aide moun, so a tcholman se tenant sala ni pou aide koyo. Ministre, ça fait sortir à cette liste, on va vous dire, Jean-Baptiste, tout est plein, et puis des gouyes, les mots, en malade corona qui peut en descendre à présent. Ministre, ça te a dit que ça c'est un bon mot à travail que le ministère de la Santé a fait, et que le ministère de la Santé a déjà commencé à suivre, et qu'il obéit à ces règles-là, qui en place contre la maladie, ça là, pour continuer à se manger. À présent, nous avons 350 personnes qui ont eu COVID-19 à pays de cette liste, avec nous avons gardé l'école, nous avons commencé à ouvrir. Avec nous avons gardé pour nous travailler, pour nous garder si ma main nous, quand ça allait l'école, à de manière qui s'en est sauve. Nous avons gardé qui l'autre pays, avec un Kawaïbla, avec l'autre place en la terre, c'est quand Covid la Kamouté, avec un Setlissi, c'est Jean Setlissi, c'est ou même Jean Setlissi qui a aidé pour mener ces cas à descendre. Mais même quand nous avons gardé, ça fait ces cas qui descendent. Nous pas oublier qui moun ka continuer mon en cette ici avec ça fait Covid 19 là. Premier ministre avec cabinet là, avec moi même ka ka sympathie avec famille, c'est moun qui moi avec nous savent c'est un bagage qui difficile pour moun avec famille. Depuis ça fait Covid 19 là commencé, nous a ni 253 moun qui moi en cette ici avec gouvernement cette ici qui a fait tout ça nous paie pour bailler ces monnaies qui jouent le Covid et qui allaient à l'hôpital, plus mes chances pour y recouvrir avec ça fait Covid 19 ça là. Selon ministre Santé, malgré plus cette liste, j'ai point la vaccine là. Là n'est toujours un lot qui est tombé malade parce que il faut qu'on prenne dose la vaccine. Ministre Santé a appelé dès et puis yo pour faire ça plus vite que possible. Il aussi qu'à considérer parce que Noël qui est approché. Quand nous allons aller en affaire Noël avec les gens, um, ni, nous ni l'habitude dans cette liste pour célébrer un chai avec nous qui avons qui um, Jean Business, um, vle anti, anti soulagement, le ce protocole là. Mais nous allons faire qu'on nous paye chaque fois nous nous meeting pour garder la situation. Hein, avec nous, nous voulons faire en manière pour tout le monde ça célébrer avec un joy Mais nous ne pouvons pas faire de manière qui va mettre plus de difficultés par les gens cette liste. Parce que nous regardons la vie, j'en sais d'ici, c'est ça, ça qui est plus important avec aussi l'économie pour les gens qui travaillent. Monsieur, madame, nous avons plus à vous adresser à ce genre de nouvelles. Et c'est comme ça que nous avons nouvelles là. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Pour que je ne puisse pas encore, c'est dire que vous avez la vie. Les gens posent toujours de nouvelles à quoi vous avez. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the Government of St. Lucia Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Humadi Mark.